Trump news. Trump's weak SCOTUS picks could cost him D.C. election. An often overlooked development in American politics and law in recent years, overshadowed by a handful of prominent conservative wins on the Supreme Court and thus noticed by few outside of staunch legal conservatives, is that the three justices appointed by former President Trump to the court are weak and unpredictable, truthfully, when compared to their two consistently conservative senior colleagues, Clarence Thomas and Samuel Alito, none of. The three Trump-era justices, Neil Gorsuch, Brett Kavanaugh, and Amy Coney Barrett, can be considered to be on par. Judges Kavanaugh and Barrett lean toward the pragmatic center-right and are willing to stay out of contentious culture debates about things like religious liberty and other sensitive matters. Their decisions on broad subjects like immigration, redistricting, and COVID limits are frequently disappointing. While Gorsuch has been a disgrace on other fronts, including gender ideology, Indian rights, and criminal law, he displays the court's greatest libertarian streak and vehemently resisted COVID despotism. Republicans need to make sure Trump chooses better justices for the Supreme Court if he wins re-election. If Trump's own Supreme Court nominees suddenly have a disproportionate say in whether or not this second term comes to fruition, it would be the stuff of a Hollywood film, the president's immunity from criminal prosecution for conduct alleged to involve official acts during his tenure in office is at issue in the case of Donald J. Trump v. United States, which the Supreme Court agreed to expedite on Wednesday. If special counsel Jack Smith wants to prosecute the 45th president for his actions related to the 2020 election, he must first decide whether to proceed with this question. Washington, D.C. Smith case will be dead in the water if the court rules that a former president is completely immune from any future criminal charges. As a result of the incumbent's dismal performance in swing states and their determination to undermine Trump at any cost, the Biden regime and the larger Democrat lawfare complex are more emboldened than ever. As the prosecution in Georgia crumbles under the weight of public corruption and the extramarital affair of Fulton County District Attorney Fani Willis, the regime has placed its full faith in Jack Smith's efforts in Washington, D.C., to resolve comparable cases involving elections. In Judge Tanya Chutkin's trial court, Smith will spare no effort in his pursuit of a guilty conviction before to the November election. Both teams will be competing against the clock, while the immunity of a living president from criminal indictment is a matter of long-standing DOJ policy, the topic of whether a former president can face such charges for acts committed while in office is new to the legal system. Defending the president from criminal charges in the future should be a no-brainer for certain actions, especially those involving fundamental Article II tasks and presidential authorities. After all, do Democrats truly believe that Obama, now that he is no longer in office, should face charges for the 2011 drone strike in Yemen that killed Anwar al-Awlaki, a U.S. citizen and al-Qaeda operative? For example, if the court were to allow criminal prosecution for such essential Article II tasks after the president's term ended, it would create a terrible precedent, but how can you decide where to stop? Should we follow Trump's lead and shield the whole president from any criminal charges in the future, as there seems to be no clear demarcation between the core and ancillary duties of the office, it is possible that Justices Alito and Thomas, who are known to be more sympathetic to assertions of extensive presidential power, may agree with Trump on every point. After this, though, it's unclear how Trump's case might win over more voters. With his don't rock the boat attitude, Justice Kavanaugh will be careful not to appear too Trumpy, even though his separation of powers jurisprudence is more pro-Article II. Even though Chief Justice John Roberts has occasionally demonstrated support for expansive assertions of presidential power, his open hatred of Trump is well known. Justices Gorsuch and Barrett are not likely to go along for the complete immunity trip either, the judges adopt the idea that only essential Article II activities are immune from future prosecution then Trump has little hope of getting anything other than a divided judgment, which would mean remanding the case to a lower court to determine if the particular behavior claimed in Smith's indictment meets the criteria. In all likelihood, such a contradictory outcome is possible, however, Trump will only have himself to blame if he loses the immunity issue completely. He could have chosen three reliable individuals in the vein of Thomas or Alito. He missed.